What is going on everybody? Brendan here, Dad Planet, coming to you live from a gorgeous day in Columbus, Ohio. 80 degrees, crystal blue skies, and a big thank you, thank you, thank you to all 1,000 plus now subscribers. I can't thank you enough, thank you so much. And also, a major thank you as well to Courtney from Bolo Buddies, Donatella, Badalina, T, for giving me the nudge, getting me over that milestone. What a fun and exciting ride. Uh, just over a year to get there. Appreciate all of you so, so much. So we're gonna do a what sold on eBay video here. This is the last one in the month, but before we get to that, let's talk giveaway. Here's what I need each one of you subscribers to do. Leave a comment on this video and keep it simple. I'm in, make the comment I'm in. And then I'm gonna let a couple of days run by. As the comments roll in, I'm gonna use a random comment generator. I'm gonna pick two of you to give you the Lego set and then the Pokemon Elite trainer box as a thank you for being a subscriber. Really, really appreciative as always, but make sure you leave that comment. I'm in in the comments of this video and then I will pick one, ship it out to you completely free, just as a simple thank you. Anyway, what sold on eBay video? This is the last one in the month of January. Did I hit the goal? Did I not hit the goal? We'll get into it in just a second, but I only do four a month. This is the last one for this month. Let's get started. All right, so first things first here, $3,500 in gross sales, 2,600 in net for the 10 day period, ending January 31st, the 22nd through the 31st. Not bad when you consider what I was doing last year. So 24% over the previous time period, 45% for net over the previous time period, but I crushed last January. So that's a good thing. And then selling costs down a little bit, uh, down 2% now for the month. Did we hit 15 grand? No. We're way short of that. But again, it's okay because if you're comparing my last January to this January, it's like a huge, huge improvement. My selling costs, you know, I would love to reduce that from 23%, but it, you know, it just is what it is. So my net sales at almost 8,900, not bad. And then moving into February, which is customarily, historically, my worst month of sales, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a stretch. But the positives, I did 350 total listings, new listings in January, including four days where I didn't do any listings at all. So my um, total in, my total listing count now is 1,079, which is a 12% increase from when I started. And then my asking price volume is just over four, it's just under $41,000, which is a 10% increase from when I started. So if I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna get to 15,000 like consistently, especially moving into the summer, those incremental increases are going to help me get there. So did I hit 15 grand? No, yeah, that's a bummer. Um, 12, five, you know, I'll be satisfied with that because of all of the other things that will advance uh, this experiment forward. And I, I'm trying to get to that number with way more listings than I did last year because I think the huge bump when I was doing $15,000, $16,000 in gross sales monthly was from COVID when everybody was locked down. So how am I gonna replicate that if I wanna grow 25% this year over last year? You know, that's, uh, that's some of the ways to do it. So anyway, we'll get into the bolos here. First one, Le Creuset. You guys probably saw this in one of my um, thrift haul videos. Had a little ding, let me show you the picture of it and uh yeah that didn't deter the buyer i got full price for this 65 bucks the color is pale i've had pale yellow but i don't really know a whole lot about like their their what they call their colors or their color schemes so this may have been called a different color but i thought you know pale yellow off white worked and uh 65 bucks is what i ended up getting for it 1734 they paid shipping so 8233 I don't remember, you have to go back into my videos to see, did I pay $6.99 for this, $5.99, $4.99? I don't remember. It wasn't a ton, it was a huge return regardless. So Le Creuset, like if you folks uh, aren't uh, aren't sourcing it, look look for it. It's a, it's a well-made brand, very popular and very in demand. And so it's like a, it's like a triple threat when you're a reseller, you're looking for, um, you know, high dollar items to, to resell and hopefully you can get it at a good price. So that's a good one, we'll move on to the next one. Now, I want you guys to pay close attention to this. It's not all Toy Story toys are bolos. This one, however, is, this is Stretch. This uh, character was voiced by Whoopi Goldberg, I think, in Toy Story 3. 
and it is incredibly hard to find. So this was in a bag of toys at a Volunteers of America that I got for 90 cents. I knew it when I saw it because I know this is a bolo. So Toy Story 3 stretch. She's like glitterly, gli gl la 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 la, glitter, stretchy. Um, and the mean look on her face, you know, re really, really, uh, really hard to find, really kind of obvious once you know what you're looking for. Um, yeah, stretch the octopus. And for that uh, 90 cent bag, I got uh, full price, 50 bucks for this. So $50 in the buyer paid, $3.99 in shipping. So pre-tax, they're $53.98 all in. Again, I only paid 90 cents. Bolo alert. Keep your eye out for stretch from Toy Story 3. Big money when you find it. We'll move on to the next one. Um, I just sold a Yankee Candle Seasons Blessings that was 12 ounces, I think, last week for 30 bucks. And then I uh, went to a store and found another one. So um, I made a mistake here. I sent a bunch of offers, a bunch of 10% off offers on a day that my business was slow and I forgot to uncheck this one because this would have sold for full price. It's worth 65. Recent sales history uh, dictates that I could have gotten 65, maybe even more for it. Um, but I sent an offer out and uh, they took 58.49 and then paid 10.10 in shipping. So they're pre-tax 68. 59 all in this candle cost me four dollars and 99 cents it's the 22 ounce size um bottom was kind of all jacked up there but season's blessings bolo for sure y obscure yankee candles like it is amazing to me the amount of money people will pay to get that perfect scent whatever it is so um yeah not every yankee candle gonna make you a ton of money but this one was probably retired discontinued and, and uh, it's the second one i've sold so $58, $59 for a candle that just blows my mind, but I don't care. I just want the sale. I want to move on. So yeah, we'll go to the next one. I paid 10 bucks for this. This is a Sizzix Big Shot. It is an embossing machine like die cut embossing machine. For those of you that have never seen it, it came with all of the um, accessories that were included in the original package. I think maybe besides the instruction manual, if it comes with a manual, I don't really know. But it was in good condition and I ended up getting full price for this. $69.99 and $22.85 shipping. So the buyer is $92.84 pre-tax. Just sitting at the bottom, it was in the electronics section at a Goodwill on the bottom shelf, like just kind of thrown under there. Um, I'm really good at kind of finding things that are misplaced and this is just another one of those instances where that happened and I'm familiar with the Sizzix embossing machines. I've sold a ton of them so this was a no-brainer for me. It should be a no-brainer for you now as well and uh, yeah it is out the door. Great great sale. I'll move on to the next one. All right bolo alert here for sure. Angry Birds, Star Wars, Telepods. You see these little things right here? I found this set for five bucks. I found another almost identical amount for five bucks. So I have that one still left in my inventory. And then I parted out some of the more expensive ones to the tune of like three, four hundred dollars. So this one sold for full price 50. If I sell the next one for 50, that's a hundred plus the 350 I have in um, solos that will take a lot longer to sell. I mean, what's the math on that? $450 in Angry Birds, Telepods, you know, Star Wars that I paid 10 bucks for, that's an insane haul. So keep your eye out for these. Now, some of them have QR codes. I don't know exactly how the QR codes are. I think you like scan it and you, you get to download the game. I'm not exactly sure. I tried to play with it on my phone with some of the other ones, but um, some of these came with QR codes on the bottom. Some of them did not. This didn't matter. There's a lot of 48 of them sold for 50 bucks. And that was just uh, another incredible find. This was at a time where I was taking my daughter to swim practice. And when I do that, I shoot up to the store that's closest to where she practices. I only have like 45 minutes. So I have to like tear through the store. Was lucky enough to find these. Came back, picked her up and Bob is your uncle. What an amazing score. So yeah, that was great timing uh, on, on my part and just a little bit of luck as well. So um, yeah, keep your eye out for that. You guys might see me do an Angry Birds uh, Bolo Alert video because there are some other items that are selling for really high dollar amounts. It's kind of like the Octonauts, not as like uh, hard to find, but some of the items that are a little bit more scarce, you know, fall into that boat and are still worth an absolute ton of money, like some of the plush. If you're in my Facebook group, you saw me post a uh, an Angry Birds Bolo. Um, so yeah, um, shameless plug, make sure you join that group. But anyway, yep, we'll move on to the next one. All right, so uh, vintage Arnold Classic t-shirt. The Arnold Classic is held in Columbus, Ohio every March, although I think it was canceled last year due to 
the virus and our governor was one of the first to cancel a major event like that. I remember thinking at the time, this guy's going to get fired immediately for, for making that call. But, um, you know, a year, a year in, here we are. This is supposed to happen next month. I mean, I don't know what the, what the outcome is going to be. I don't know if it, this one has also been canceled, but this was a vintage Arnold Classic shirt single stitch i will sh let me see if i can get you a picture of this so if you look at the sleeve right there you can see the single stitch right there it was on a screen stars tag xl size like wheelhouse size for somebody that's going to buy the shirt and strangely enough it went overseas but um there is, this is a, a bolo a bolo for arnold classic shirts you know for sure again regionally i'm in columbus ohio so this would be a little bit easier for me to find them and turn up but they'll they, this is a worldwide event so you will have success you will see these in one of your stores wherever it is you are if you're outside of ohio um so it's not as obscure as some of the other things that happen here regionally but um 40 bucks i paid 90 cents for the shirt so 39.99 uh, they're three. They paid three ninety nine in in shipping, <clears throat> but again, that doesn't include customs and, and all that jazz. So where is this at? Um, Forty three ninety eight all in, and again, I paid ninety nine cents for it. So that was a great score. We will move on to the next one, which is also Le Creuset. This is a butter bell crock. I will maximize the pictures. It was marked three dollars and ninety nine cents. There's the top. There's the bottom, and then that's what it looks like. Uh, once you pull the top out. So there's the cup, there's the fill line on the bottom. Awesome piece, beautiful red, cherry red color. And it sold for, full. you can see it's only four inches. It's a really small piece, sold for 50 bucks, full price, 50 bucks and 10.10 .10 in shipping. So the buyer is $60.90 all in again, 3.99 at a Goodwill. This was on a cart and I knew it when I saw it. So I scooped it up. The second Lake Crusette thing I've sold in that 10 day period. So that was, awesome and every time i find lake crusade itself so keep your eye out for those pieces like i said before we'll move on to the next one now this one had an issue so carhartt buy good brands right buy good brands and they always sell eventually but can you see the glaring hole right there it is uh it was pretty big so this is like a has like a velour feel to it i think it was vintage and like a bluish gray color with the blue interior but it did have some issues that one right there again doing the homework in store, I knew that this would sell based on comparables. Now, can I price like at the top of the market with the flaw that is so ag abundantly obvious? No, I had to bring my price down a little bit. So where these were, where I think I probably could have sold this in the maybe 50, 60, $65 range, I had to bring it down a little bit um, or take an offer, whatever it was, but it still sold. So I, I say this a lot, and for those of you that are new, I want you to follow along in this way of thinking is never be afraid to disclose any and all flaws, okay? Because there's a buyer for almost everything. And it's a great way to build trust when you do that. It's like, look, there's a big hole here. Just make sure you've seen it, blah, 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 price your item. And the, for me, my experience is the item always sells, no matter what the flaws are. So um, good one here, $44.99 is what I got for it. $8.85 in shipping, $53.84. I found this at a Volunteers of America. They priced it at $0.99, cents and they did that because of the flaw. So again, that made the decision even easier, where this thing would have normally been priced at like five, six, seven bucks. <clears throat> I got it for $0.99 cents because of the flaw. So this one did not have a flaw. I bought it at the same store, um, but and I, I couldn't tell if it was vintage or not. I got to check the tag. I don't, does it have a date on it? Um, I don't, I couldn't find one, so I didn't mark it as vintage, although I think maybe it could have been Puffer Jacket, Ralph Lauren. This is a very different tag because it usually says like Ralph Lauren Polo Sport or just Polo Sport. This one said Ralph Lauren Sport, and I hadn't seen a, uh, a neck tag like that before, um, but it's authentic, so that wasn't really much of an issue. Always show my measurements. And I got $53.99 for this. So $53.99 and then $8.50 in shipping. So $62.49 all in for the puffer. I paid $6.96. And vintage Ralph Lauren, older Ralph Lauren, uh, you know, especially from a period of the 90s, is selling very, very well. Out probably would outsell a lot of their newer stuff um, if you had the same amount of the vintage mixed in with the same amount of new. It's just people are looking for that era right now when you're talking Ralph Lauren, and I think this fit into that kind of wheelhouse for those buyers. So that was a pretty good find, seven bucks. I'm happy with it. 
we'll move on to the next one. I went to an estate sale and I actually have the bottoms to these two. They're, they're blue. They match the blue in the top and I forgot to list them. They're like in my basement. So I should probably get those on the market. But um, yeah, vintage spider ski jacket. It is a, was it a men? Hold on, I gotta go back. It's a men's, men's small. Yeah, men's small. Um, great looking. Spider innovation, thinsulate, 100% polyester, nylon uh, lining. And I think I got, did I get full price for this, 54? <clears throat> yeah, 54.99 and 11.75 in shipping. So the buyer is 66.75 all in. I paid $10 for the outfit, so let's call this part five. Um, this is kind of a one-off, but like vintage vintage ski bibs, vintage ski tops, vintage ski bottoms, there is a market for them. Not, not every one of them is gonna fall into the bolo alert category, something you wanna be on the lookout for. Spider is one of those brands you definitely do wanna take a double take on. Um, always kind of a hit or miss thing. So this one, I couldn't really find comparables, but this was at an estate sale where I was absolutely killing it. So I was like, what's another 10 bucks? So I just, I got it. Um, not really doing a whole lot of research. So I'm thankful that this sold, but yeah, I gotta get the bottoms listed. That basement, oh my gosh, it'll be the death of me. Anyway, next one. Um, all right, so Cuisinart coffee machine. Anytime you see a coffee machine that has a bean grinding element to it, that's usually an indication that the thing is going to be high priced or it was high priced at retail. So pay attention to them. This is one of those items where on the surface, if you're looking at it, like if it was on a, a shelf up high up top and not a lot of people can see the bean grinder in the back, people are gonna skip over it because it looks extremely basic. But if you just pick the thing up and look at it, it uh, and I brewed. I always always test all of these, so I brewed it, ran beans through it. Um, I always have whole beans on hand, so I knew that it worked perfectly. But there's the bean grinder, and it had an unbelievably nice um, espresso smell to it because of its pre-owned use. So I thought that was kind of cool, actually. Now the one flaw that this had, well, the two flaws, the little crack there. Um, but it didn't. You, you could still seal the top. No big deal. There's a um, little. Uh, this is where the this is like the water reservoir tank, and there's a piece that goes on the top. They were readily available from a lot of other sellers for like nine bucks, and so I disclosed that it was missing that piece, and then of course it had that crack. That was not an issue because this is a bolo for sure. So Cuisinart model DGB 900 BC chrome sold for full price. You can see here I put missing the uh, water reservoir lid and a uh, hundred dollars what a slam dunk I don't remember what I paid for this I think it was seven bucks uh, but the buyer paid 1757 in shipping so they're 11756 pre-tax all in again anytime you see a bean grinder grab it not a bean grinder like that's separate bean grinders uh, because those are are definitely hit or miss but if it is attached to the coffee maker you could have a bowl on your hands so grab it and look it up we'll move on to the next one. Uh, I think this was also in one of my haul videos. You guys saw it like the box was totally destroyed. And because the box was totally destroyed, I think the store marked it. Well, even if the box hadn't have been destroyed, it would probably still have been marked $4.99. So I paid four, four or five bucks for this. And I took an offer finally of uh, $1.25. So Department 56, Animated Sledding Hill. I have a video that I uploaded showing that it worked perfect. And um, the nice thing about this was I was able to keep the styrofoam pieces. So when I was packing this up to ship, it just I dropped almost perfectly into a box that fit. So there would be no shifting in transit. Unfortunately, this has to go from Ohio to Washington. That's where the buyer is. But um, anyway, I gave him a deal and I knew this would sell. This is a major bolo, another one you really want to keep your eye out for. Again, when people are getting rid of their large Department 56 lots on like Craigslist or Marketplace, this might be tucked in there too. So yeah, you'll find them at thrift stores, but check the uh, Marketplace listings too for Department 56 because I don't think people really understand just how valuable this one is. So keep that in mind. Um, the buyer did pay $31.94 in shipping. So they're $156.94 all in. Again, five bucks for me and then 125 for me. I love it. So hopefully you'll find one too. We'll move on to the next one. All right. Um, yeah, I was feeling generous on this day too. So vintage Oakland Raiders snapback hat. This is an OG hat from the 90s. Um, I don't even remember what brand it is. What is it? American Needle officially licensed product. I had this thing listed at 120, but I did take an offer of $95. Buyer paid $3.99 in shipping. So they're $98.99 all in. And uh, this hat cost me $1.99. Sports Specialties, American Needle, 
those are some of the brands you really want to pay attention to. Um, this hat was sweet. It uh, it didn't really have outside of just being like normally pre-owned. It didn't have any major flaws with it. So um, sweet hat, great sale, ninety five bucks over two. I mean that's that's what keeps you and I in this business, right? That's what makes the thrill of the hunt worth it when you can score such a huge return on such a small spend. So um, just a little showing off there, but vintage hats, you guys, I've done uh, previous videos on it. If you're like binge watching Brendan, go and look for some of my Bolo Alert videos because I did one on sports specialties and um, you would be amazed at the amount of uh, hats that sports specialties is selling. They are now owned by Nike FYI, but vintage OG sports specialties hats, tons of money. Just dig through that video. Actually, I'll link it in the description, make it easy on you and uh, we'll move on to the next one. All right, story behind this. Volunteers of America, this was behind the counter, uh, listed at $75. Now, it may have been worth that if there had been more than two of the bug molds in the box, like if there were like 10 or 11, like it, it may have made a little bit more sense. Um, but I looked inside, saw what was in it, and uh, they were checking eBay for sure because there was a recent sold for around 75 bucks. So this sat for a month, and they also have a day every month where everything is 50% off. So it didn't even sell on the 50% off day. Well, I went in on the following 50% off day, the following month, and they had removed it from the shelf and put it back into Gen Pop. Um, uh, and it was marked five bucks. So on half day, I got it for $2.50 and I turned around and I sold it for $75. So um, way to come full circle and have patience, I guess. I don't know, but um, it's the original Creepy Carlos Bug Maker um, and it worked. I had to test it. It had all of the goop. I don't know. What is that stuff? Like the goop, mold goop? I don't know what you call that. Um, oh, it, it is. It says goop. How hilarious. I just made that up. What a guess. Yeah, so um, plenty of, of the liquids left, and I opened each one of them. They were in great shape. So this was a, this was a great sale, and the buyer's going to be happy. 75 bucks and $12.97 in shipping. So the buyer is $87.96 all in for this one. Um, way to be patient. This was a great sale. I've sold probably four or five of these in the last 24 calendar months, so I knew it when I saw it. Keep your eye out for both the bug maker and the molds you can sell the molds separately for a really good dollar amount as well so keep your eye out for both of those even if you can uh, find the molds separate you'll make a ton of money all right and the last one this isn't a huge dollar amount but it is my favorite because it's a vintage um valentine so the the sale was obviously very timing timely um clarissa explains it all I've never seen the show. I just knew that it was Nickelodeon in the mid 90s. Someone was going to absolutely love it and this sold within an hour. Uh, so I got $20 for it. I only paid $1.99. The pack of 42 Valentines was brand new, sealed with a Marks tag. So it came from Marks. You can even see I have the year wrong. It says 1993, even though maybe it's a, does it say 94? It says 94 on the front. Um, but yeah, amazing. I've already gotten good feedback from, from it. So the, uh, the post office got it to the buyer quickly. And um, 20 bucks, 3.99 shipping, so they're 23.98 all in. Cost me a buck 99. I love it. Happy Valentine's Day for whoever bought it, and that's it. And I love each and every one of you. Thank you so so much. I appreciate it. Remember, I'm in. Leave I'm in in the comments here. I'll let the, a couple days pass. Choose some winners. Send the stuff out and. Super appreciative. If you liked what you saw, if you learned something today, make sure you leave a like and make sure, of course, that you are subscribed. If you are not already subscribed, Brendan here, Dead Planet. That's it. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next video.